episode one of uh, House of Secrets. And I'm pretty sure both of us were pretty darn convinced it definitely wasn't a mass suicide. And I'm still not convinced, but that last part definitely gave you some cause for thought. But I mean, it could have been a couple of the older family members did it to everybody. Yeah. Oh, it's definitely somebody but, in the family that did it. Because obviously, their hands and feet being bound. Yeah. It definitely wasn't a mass suicide. No. Um, except if, like, a couple of older ones were convinced of it and they killed the kids. And obviously, a kid's not going to want to, that young, going to want to kill himself, like grandma's. And then they said there was something about a a ritual or something. So there was some, some weird going on there because they bought the stools, and they bought the wire, and the saris. Yeah, so that's weird. Yeah. So it's clearly some, almost like, almost feels cultish. Yeah. A little bit. Um, first of all, horribly tragic when you're talking to the family, but... I was convinced this was an outside murder. And then I thought maybe it's a murder-suicide. And then they showed that footage at the end of family members buying stools and wire. What the heck? Yeah, so this is getting weird. It's, I think it though it went where I thought it was going. It's a cult type situation. But yeah, it's just manipulation. But it's either either possession of some sort and they obviously that person controlled the rest of them or they were so convinced that it was the dad that they just believed it. Yeah. Um some definite need of uh mental health uh help. It's hard for you. Was needed. I'm absolutely convinced they murdered the children. Yeah, like, me too. Yeah. That's the really strange thing. It's like... There's 11 people and all of them are like, okay, this is legit. Yeah, he's, he's possessed. Let's listen to him. <laughs> My first inclination is confirmed that I thought this was a murder-suicide. But what I wasn't expecting is the fact that we've gotten into something that is as personal for me as anything ever. And that's the realm of the demonic. Just finished the last episode. It took some weird turns there at the end, but I feel like our initial thought was basically, it's almost a cult. Yeah. Essentially, but also I don't agree that they don't know what to call it. They murdered the he murdered those children. That yeah. that's what that's called. Well, I just think it. If I convinced Leland to do something, even if it was accidental, it's still murder on my part. But I mean, it was eleven years of manipulation, and so they just bought into it. Yeah. Because he was the patriarch of the family, and. The whole losing the voice thing was weird. Yeah. And then obviously he had some major brain damage, obviously, as you said. Like just yeah. falling asleep, n narcolepsy. Um, well, from the motorcycle accident, he clearly had lingering side effects from that. And then to... Lose your voice or that wanting people to think you lost your voice. Yeah. A lot of manipulation there. Or it's a, it, who knows what it is, whether it's just he had... A severe mental disorder, which I did enjoy that the it kind of turned into this. Yeah, like mental health big, awareness. Big, yeah, big that pull was for wonderful. mental health awareness. But yeah, that was uh, mm -hmm. so heartbreaking. So sad. Extremely well done. Extremely well done. Obviously, we'll be talking a lot right now. Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction idiots of Corbin. Rick. <laughs> There's you they you already done the intro. Oh, I did? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it's crazy. Twitter. Yeah. Instagram. <laughs>
<laughs> Anyways, uh, welcome back. Today we're doing... Uh, it's different. Today we're doing a docu-series review. It's probably going to be more of a discussion. Yeah. Because it outside... Obviously there's a filmmaking aspect to documentaries and we'll right. talk about that. Right. But obviously for the most part it's just talking about whatever happened in it. Exactly. As opposed to and the how acting it's the, and everything like that that right. we normally do. So this is a new experience for us. Uh, we watched um, House of Secrets. I don't know. There's a another word behind yeah, it's the House of Secrets, the Barari Deaths. Uh, directed and I think uh, produced is it? Oh, yeah, Lena Yadav which was like she, it's it's her. Uh, oh, there's uh, two directors. Lena Yadav directed it, and yeah. as did Anubhav Chopra. Uh, but she also wrote. And it. She was the writer um, of the docu series, and it's all about the. Um, the I'm assuming most of you know about it, and and for those of you who don't know. Same director as Parched. Yeah, same director as Parched. It's a docu-series about the strange deaths of 11 people. Are we going to do a spoiler? No, just go watch it. Go watch it first before you hear us talk, because we're going to talk about spoilers. Especially if you don't know anything about it. Yeah. Just go watch it. It's a quick watch. I feel like, yeah, it's three episodes, 40 minutes each. I feel most Indians know this story. It was probably, I think, a huge thing. It's like it's like OJ basically when OJ was happening, it was all yeah. over the news. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, man, what do you think? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'll go to the technical side of things because we do appreciate documentaries just as an audience and also in terms of stuff that gets uh, attention for award season because there's Oscars. Like last year, I was jumping up and down, running through the house when my octopus teacher won best documentary and watched almost all of last year's documentaries, and some of them were really, really good. But it's a whole other ball of wax. It's it's how was the stuff put together? And I thought from a technical aspect, and we'll get into some of the details about the actual events and why I think this was such a good docu yeah. documentary. Because I think this was a very well done documentary. Yeah, so do I. Uh, I thought uh, obviously well filmed for one. Yeah. Was, um, and all I which I would expect, but the way it was pieced together yep. for two people who did not know the story, right? In the slightest, we didn't we didn't hear about it. All. It wasn't if it was news, it was like a, a small little. Uh, I, I have no recollection of ever hearing about this story. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the way they kind of <clears throat> pieced it together was like, okay, here's this. And then this happened. And then so you're like, okay, I got it. And then they throw this other wrench right like at the end of the first episode. We're like, wait, they bought what? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Why would they do that? Yeah. And then I almost did a video in the middle. And I just, I thought, no, I'm just going to do the ones you asked for. Yeah. And, and it was, I, I, I turned the camera on myself and I was like this. And I said, there were 11 pipes? <laughs> that was weird. That was extremely weird. Uh, Very so weird. Getting it all, and then obviously the, the eleven last, years. The last episode was uh, it was really good, but it was also like that. The strangest thing was the dude didn't have a voice for a year. Yeah, dude didn't have a voice for a year. Did he? Did he did not? He, did he not? That's such a weird. I'm such a skeptic. I'm like, no, the dude's, of course. The, the dude's a fucking yeah. liar. Right. <laughs> yeah. I totally yeah. didn't believe it. Right. In the slightest. Right. But especially because like they were so like put offish about like don't we're not going to talk about this anymore. Like it was, it was such a, a, a weird situation, but it was also really well pieced together to keep you engaged yeah. each episode to the very end. And we'll get into some of the, the details of it, but I, one of the things I appreciated, it was telling us to Indrani, she didn't watch it with me. But she knows about the She story. knows the story. Yeah, yeah. And I, I pointed out, one of the things I appreciated about the way this was put together and directed and presented was I felt like they covered all of the bases they needed to and they erred on the side of forensic science and psychology, mm -hmm. but didn't ignore the prospect of things going on that were supernatural. Supernatural, for sure. But when you consider the potential for this to have been hyper-spiritualized and mm -hmm. hyper, this could have gone the route of just, let's get eyeballs and sensationalize this. And I felt like this was a very sober, uh, attempt to give you as much information to come to some definitive conclusions about what transpired without wrapping it all up for you. Yeah, and I thought they pieced together not only the, the current interviews that they did, but also the, the real-time footage that they interwove into it. So you yeah. the, the, like what was going on in the media, they were blaming this, the, the plumber's wife 
for, right. for a long time. Uh, and the, yeah, who was the the, the, ta the tantric priestess. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I said that to Indrani. I said, if this had happened in a different part of the world or at a different time, but let's take it contemporary, there are places in the world, uh, India included, where this kind of thing could happen and people would just presume the tantric priestess is to blame. Mm -hmm. And let's take her out in the street and punish her for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I thought all that was really, really well done. Uh, hats off to, uh, say her name. Yeah, but for, for Lena Yadav being- She was the one I saw at the end, but, but there's two yeah, directors on Yeah, there's two directors on there collaboratively, but it was Lena's, it's, it's Lena's project. Yeah. And did a very good job. I thought it was well balanced. Um, I thought the interviews were really good. I appreciated that we got a balance, a really good balance throughout of the investigative people in law, as well as autopsy, and that's concluded in the law side of things, the press, and then family and friends. Yeah. But all those bases were covered really well. Yeah, so uh, let's just get into the story, man. Yeah. That, it's so, so strange. Because at first, you're like, you're almost positive. Clearly, this is a murder-suicide. No, people yeah. don't just gag themselves and no. tie their feet and all that kind of stuff. And, I was like waiting for the autopsy. It's like, okay, they were drugged and then hung yeah. by somebody maniacal. Yeah. Somebody owed, they owed money to somebody. The, the biggest twist at the first one was they, why were they buying stools well, no. and rope? <laughs> when I see family members buying the actual stools and rope, I'm like, they were planning this. Or somebody was planning this. And just, they didn't know what they were buying. Yeah. That was my first thought at the end of the first episode was, somebody in the family is is planning this, and the ones buying the stuff don't really know what's going on. That yeah. was my first thought. And then, the, I think the second episode was all about the diary. The it was diary. almost Tom Riddle diary style. Like Harry yeah. Potter, Tom Riddle, uh, and Jenny was uh, kind of, Tom Riddle was controlling Jenny through the diary that she yeah. was writing in. It was almost like that. It was very much, and it was well done. The direction in that sequence of whoever they had do the narration to be the voice, mm -hmm. and that was really good, as was in the very, very far background, these subtle whispers going on underneath in the back with the script going up and being highlighted. It was really well done to yeah, convey was, the weirdness of it. Was it was so weird because everything that the, you, you kind of pieced together was, so the, the, the dad the dad died and then now right, he's, the patriarch. he's come back and he's kind of possessing, I guess is what you led son, to believe, yeah, yeah. the son. Right. And now they're all following what he wants what he's telling them to do because it's paying off for them financially and I know everything they're being told to do over this period of time the advice is proving to be beneficial so it's it's one of those things it's like you don't know if this is like a possession demonic thing you don't know if this is just like like they were saying a psychosis right. um, kind of mental disorder right which obviously both could be very very true you don't know if it's just this guy who is just sick for power and like he just, I don't know, that the strangest thing is that he also killed himself in the end. So it's, yeah. that's, it's not like a, because my first thought, at the, I think that we said in like when we did our thing, I was like, this feels like a cult. Right. But normally in cults, unless he gets, the, the cult leader gets caught, they're not going to usually kill themselves. No, I mean, it, it, Jim Jones is yeah. the first one that comes to mind and he, he dies too. Uh -huh. um, so maybe that's not true, but that's, that's the initial thought that I felt was like, this is like very culty. But it was like 11 years of manipulation mm -hmm. of this this guy that all of them bought into, which is so strange. Yeah. These, and all educated people were like, right. yeah, this guy who's talking like the grandpa is, is sane. Yeah, there's a word I was waiting to hear said, and I didn't hear it said. And it's because of my own personal subjective proclivities. I mentioned this after episode two in the little clip. Um, of my own personal experience with supernatural and in particular the realm of the of the invisible with both the light and the dark mm. and i didn't hear the word deception mm. i heard psychosis and i heard mental illness which you can't share mental illness my, my my dad has been battled mental illness and is mentally ill all of his life he never gave it to me and mm. i've been with my dad through some of his worst breaks days without sleeping, just being literally in the room with a man who's in completely insane. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I I struggled when I was dealing with that. I mean, that's why they call it shared psychosis. Yeah, but I, I I personally didn't buy in. You know, he stood there on the railing of the stairs in North Hollywood, pointing at me, saying, "God's turned me into Rick Searcy," and I knew he wasn't. I knew that was my dad having a mental break, um, and I wasn't joining him in his yeah. journey into being the, the cosmic. Singing I think cowboy. one of the other interesting things about this, though, is the fact that it's an Indian family patriarchy yeah system yeah i think somebody at the end of the episode said did these women have a choice to question right as well no because remember early on the fact that the one woman said she can't go out without asking permission she was not able to go out without asking permission the permission was always given but had to ask and that does play a huge part in the psycho the psychosis of manipulation mm -hmm. and whether or not you have a choice to do or don't do yeah. this same is true for the children i'm 100 percent positive they murdered those children yeah those children would not like yeah let's let's do this they and that's why their feet were bound tighter than others right and so they're kicking to get away and yeah 100 percent believe yeah. that the, when they like they were like i don't know what to call this obviously i don't think they intended it. and I, that might be true they might yeah. not have intended to die but if, no, if it, like if this was me and this was like Leland and I didn't mean for Leland to die, it's still murder. If correct. Leland dies and I made and I made him do something. Yeah, there's degrees of murder and manslaughter, but I I agree that from the physical realm perspective and from a legal perspective, you can see this and deem it as a tragic accident driven by somebody with mental illness. I personally think yeah. it is a deeper thing than that for Demonic a couple possession you think yeah. i i for a couple of reasons of my own personal experience and things i know from other people and things i've studied and i've read and i don't need to get into it very long i might do an afterthought now that i think about it for those who care uh, yeah i'm i'm going to i'm going to do that i'm going to do an afterthought on my channel for those of you who want to hear more of my own personal story in the background on it if it matters to you but uh, there wasn't the word deception and there was a lot of stuff pinpointing and going to and has from my experience the hallmarks of what are the work of the demonic mm -hmm. where there is deception where there is something going on where somebody is possessed and uh the fact that it's also a very big couple of hallmarks about the work of the demonic in that regard are things being reinforced in the physical realm to confirm to the person there's no way this can't be true yeah it's part of the deception it's how can I deny it when it's verified in my circumstances? And there's a, a point to that. Mm -hmm. I've been deceived in that way. Mm -hmm. I've completely changed a worldview because things in my physical world were being so undeniably in my face. It's like, how do you deny this is real when I just saw that with my own eyes? Mm -hmm. And the other thing being the, uh, the fact that one of the hallmarks, like... Whenever you hear it, it happens a lot. A lot of evil killings, really evil killings, end with the killer killing themselves. Yeah. That's another hallmark of no one's surviving this. I'm gonna use this person, and then when they're done doing what I wanted them to do, I will end them as well. And you can't, unfortunately, in the world of criminal law, they, you, you, you can't, that has to be ruled out as a, I don't know what that was, yeah, uh, I'll, and too often it gets two things happen. Sometimes somebody definitively mental, mentally ill gets blamed for something that's spiritual and never had anything to do yeah. with something spiritual. And the reverse is true. Mm -hmm. It was not mental illness. It was something spiritual, and yeah. it's it's purposefully did, hard to discern. I did like that they ended it with um, kind of a "I'm going to let you decide," and then also the message of we need to discuss this and these yeah. types of things to grow as a society and help yeah. each other as a society. And I love the whole, even if, even if that wasn't the actual thing that happened, the whole positive reinforcement of, uh, mental health. Exactly. In this talking to something and how it's, it's taboo well, in, in Indian society to, yeah. to if something's wrong. I need to go talk to somebody about this. It's three, three things based on their importance. So I would say the first thing that's the most important and their link would be, the combination of being able to talk about mental health mm -hmm. and superstition and spirituality mm -hmm. because irrespective of whether or not this was definitively something going on demonically mm -hmm. the spiritual and the superstitious was at the heart of this mm -hmm. if they were convinced to do something based on a mass hypnosis 
They were doing spiritual rituals. They found the remains of a spiritual ritual. He was consistently writing down, you must do this because God, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. This taps into that and having yeah. conversations about what is what is true spirituality versus empty religion. What is- There's actually a, a great line in this. Somebody said, where does faith end and delusion begin? Yeah, great. Yeah, it was, I thought great that was like, statement. whoa, great line. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing as well that's part of this, and you alluded to it a moment ago, was the fact that how much of that scenario was right for this kind of activity mm -hmm. because of an unhealthy patriarchal dominance. Yeah. That, and I say unhealthy because you can have a family choose to have a structure that has patriarchal hierarchy mm -hmm. and it's not domineering. It's, it's, it's just built on a mutual understanding of each other. And in fact, it's done in a way where the, the, the man is actually doing something of service and doesn't lord it over people. Unfortunately, that is not the norm. Uh, <laughs> usually patriarchy is what it is. It's, it's awful. Yeah. Um, but incredibly thought provoking. I think it's an important yeah. event to know took place. I enjoyed it. It was, it was a nice uh, change of pace from yeah. obviously just, just doing a movie review. Because, and the fitting for October, really. Yeah, it is. Right? Um, it's because it's like, we don't have to look at this in terms of being as critical of a film as we normally are in terms of like, I, we didn't have to judge any acting. We didn't have to do anything like that. I mean, there the was, story. technically there was some acting people re recreating certain events. Yeah. But that, that's not really what we're talking about. And there's like, not like a, a written story there's outside of just what exactly happened right um so it was nice to actually uh sit down and watch i love watching documentaries yeah i think they're too. so interesting especially like crime documentaries yeah there's i think everyone loves a good crime documentary yeah especially one that's a mystery that you have to kind of figure out yeah because it's happening it goes right that's why people love watching anything is that we we want to know in the human condition are we normal and what's abnormal and where do I fall in that category? And when yeah. something happens outside that realm, it's really intriguing it's to figure out what is it that caused a human being to, to do that, whether mm -hmm. they're the victim or they're the perpetrator. It, the documentaries almost always touch on those aspects of what, what would it have been like to have been somebody that that, that happened to or some could I potentially do that? What are the signals? Is there somebody I know that lives next door to me that could do that? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, so uh, let us know what you thought about this uh, and your other thoughts on because you know exactly what happened if, they, if there was stuff that was left out. I have no clue. Uh, but let us know your thoughts and what should be our next documentary? Yeah, now we're down that road. Now we're down that road yeah. and then know how to review it. Uh, <laughs> let us know what the next one should be down below.